very pleased to be here today with you. Uh, thank you, Santeri, and the rest of organizers of the Games Break conference. This is this is really exciting. Um, so, depending, also good afternoon, evening, depending from where you are. Uh, here in Finland, it's almost lunchtime. So, yeah, uh, I hope that this topic will be uh, interesting to also have while you possibly have lunch. Um, so, we should be talking today about uh, education and the uh, education and the uh, connection with the um, games industry. And this is something that uh, we know for a fact that there is a huge gap in mainly communication when it comes to um, uh, industry and, and educational institutions. But this is not even just about the academic side uh, of the, of the uh, let's say, education. It's, it's also even bigger gap between the youth and having um, the sort of like sharing the information about the industry and about uh, also career opportunities uh, to let's say uh, young adults, youth, uh, people of 15 plus years. Uh, so, uh, so today I will be talking about that. And before we get to this whole education and industry uh, topic, a bit about myself and my daily job. So, um, I'm a CEO and founder of uh, MyTail. MyTail is a company here in Turku, in Finland, where we focus on uh, narrative-driven experiences in mixed reality. So we do a lot of VR, AR stuff and, and all, the, all the R's. Um, and why narrative is because we believe that the stories are the best way to actually engage and give this immersive experience, regardless of the uh, medium we are using. So, so this is something that we, and we're not here talking ever about walls of text. We're talking about visual narrative, uh, interactive storytelling and so on, because through discovery, one learns the best. And uh, if you notice the uh, um, learn best part is because uh, games as a medium uh, of, of completely new medium of expression, which has two parts here, we as creators of games gives enormous amount of opportunity to use games for various things besides entertainment. Obviously, uh, biggest part is entertainment. And regardless of other um, uh, um, applications for, for game design and different gamified solutions, it should be fun. Um, so, so this is the big problem with um, gamification serious games out there is because there's the stigma about you know, being a serious game or being a gamified tool or being, you know, like edu game. Um, because there are no big successes out there of, of in this genre uh, that would um, uh, show the sort of like how much um, uh, also business opportunity there is. And, and this is what my company does. We are, uh, besides being workaholics and, but also parents and academics, uh, so most of us have also PhD degrees in, in various fields, mainly in um, uh, humanities. Um, so, so this is why we are, we are, as individuals, very passionate about education in, in general. And I'm also a certified teacher uh, uh, in art. So my background is in classical arts. However, uh, I have been, uh, besides my PhD in uh, studies in art history and museology, um, I have been uh, very active in obviously game research and also currently teaching game design and game art at University of Turku. Um, so all of this is where our team is really passionate about. And this is what we want to do. We want to break this um, stigma, at least it's our uh, main uh, kind of aim and, and a dream to do so that we make this change on the market when it comes to edu games, uh, gamification and so forth. Um, and this is something that I will now say that most of you are going to, most likely it's going to be controversial, but um, I think the reason why there were not so many good products out there when it comes to edu, uh, uh, edu games, for example, or healthcare based uh, games or, or anything like that is because wrong people have been working on it. And I don't mean now about um, uh, the sort of like that uh, 
uh, wrong team or wrong, but the wrong attitude, wrong approach. Uh, it's essential to communicate a lot. Uh, it's all about listening when it comes to working with um, uh, any kind of educational game or, or any, any gamified uh, uh, solution. Because professionals from different fields must work together. This is the essential part. So listening of different experts. So besides, let's say, if we talk about edu game, uh, most of the teachers are now also forced to uh, kind of make gamified solution for their classroom, for example. But guess what? They are not game. They are not game designers. They don't play games. Not necessarily. Some teachers do, obviously. But but so so this is the thing that if you want to have a proper uh, gamified uh, solution tool um, learning uh, platform or whatnot. You have to work with the professionals in the field of development and design. Uh, so, so this is where this gap has been, especially in the product development, uh, because it's expected from teachers who are experts in teaching, in curriculum, in, in making this sort of like learning objectives and aims and all that. Now that they have to put into sort of interactive uh, form, which is not something that their expertise lay. And this is where we get a lot of bad products out there, uh, which, uh, or, or just being basically, you know, like there's this metaphor that just like, if you just, you know, you have a broccoli and you uh, dip it in chocolate, it's still broccoli. It's just covered in chocolate. So basically it's the still same thing. So that's why we have a lot of quizzes and, and this type of um, edu games out there, at least, especially in the past that naturally did not attract anyone. Um, so it's frustrating for everyone to actually go through it. And now this kind of attitude towards educational games continues. Uh, so also uh, many developers don't find it challenging enough or they think that it's really hard to work with, uh, let's say, teachers or, or uh, healthcare professionals, depending what kind of thing. Uh, I disagree. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic to work with uh, different ex uh, experts from different fields. And I, as a game designer and creative director, like, I really find it fascinating as a challenging thing as a designer to find a solution, like how we can actually make this work together uh, and make this something really, really immersive for the user. Because it's all about the user. It has to be. Same like from the games industry, because we are all from the games industry professionals. I mean, from our work in the commercial games, we know how these things go, especially free to play and how to engage and motivate and so on. So because one thing that games do uniquely well and any game in the market, when you think about from the game, you know, free to play mobile game to uh, online MMO, <laughs> like these are every single game teaches you from the moment you enter about the world, about the commands, about the how, what are the rules, what is good and bad, how things work. Uh, it motivates regardless of the um, uh, what kind of uh, tasks and quests and how difficult something is and how many times you fail. Still, you want to do it again. You try again. You go back. So failure is not something that it's it's basically incurred. It's there is this a lot of achievement, a lot of things that that. Um, sort of for the personal feeling, this sort of, um, emotional connection that there is between the player and the designer who is behind that, uh, obviously a team of, of people behind the game, but let's just for the sake of clarity kind of put designer there on the, on the other side of the game. Um, so this communication between the player and the designer is something that is extremely fascinating, at least for me, <laughs> when it comes to um, how much and how we as, as developers, how we can de develop, I mean, give these tools for experiencing all of this that players can and should experience in, in our games. Um, so these are the, 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 and then when you think about even monetization part, I mean, free to play games, um, as it says, it's free to play. And yet the biggest kind of impact when it comes to business comes from the, from the free to play. So how do these uh, developers make money out of that? Um, obviously there is a whole <laughs> science behind like a lot of psychology uh, uh, experts are actually working with, with developers of, of making it, but basically, you know, like throughout having this 
all this emotional engagement, all of this sort of uh, encouragement and everything else from the game, not just that keeps the players intact inside that fantasy that we are creating for them, but also makes them pay. So think about that sort of thing that's from the, like they're, they're voluntarily without any, um, uh, you know, like restrictions as such or push um, uh, per se. I mean, there are pushes, let's not, but let's not go to, to that obviously, <laughs> but it's just like, it's, it's, a, it's a psychological part. So uh, still it's a voluntary act. And this is something that in the education side is lacking especially in edu games. So, so um, this is something that we want to, in our company, focus on. So how we can create this sort of very engaging, motivating games, which obviously are following all the uh, learning uh, curve and agenda that teachers, for example, have. And as, as a team, we also work on, on lots of other uh, gamified solutions for, for different um, companies. But uh, if we just think about education, educational games. This is something that uh, we believe that from the industry experience, from the actual, you know, commercial games development, uh, regardless of the platform, is something that uh, we definitely see huge potential as a business, but also amazingly inspiring challenge as designers and, and developers to, to pursue. So, um, so this is something that we uh, at my tail, uh, strongly believe in when it comes to um, that's that's our vision and mission as a company and as a team. Um, of course, next to that, we also because we are in the company and we we are fully independent uh, and uh, and re wish to maintain that way. Uh, so the how we finance so we fi self finance also our own PC games that we develop. Um, uh, besides this, uh, let's say, B2B services that we mainly uh, do uh, through the gamification and, and um, consulting when it comes to uh, gamified solutions. So, so this is how we maintain the, the company stability. And so, so when it comes to now on the market, because market has its own uh, thing. And, and when it comes to, uh, I mean, Finnish market when it comes to also educational games, it's slightly better compared to out there. And now with um, uh, a, a lot of things have already changed with this pandemic. Uh, so we see a lot of interest and a lot of impact when it comes to um, having educational tools and, and co-working tools and, and many others that which are a big part of, of also games uh, industry production and and the, and the tools that we use in everyday life, um, and so so yeah, the, there is obviously a huge need, and this is something that will be changed quite much even after this. A uh, lot of parts, I believe, will stay, will remain, even when things go back to normal uh, from the current stage. Meaning that um, material will be, let's say, learning material or any other therapy material, or anything else will be required also to be possible to do. So for companies who didn't necessarily um, uh, think of that before. Um, so, so now these are the changes that are coming and these are really, uh, again, additional kind of part there when it comes to the sort of like challenges for us as developers to create even more um, sort of like really high value, high impact products for, for education and, and healthcare. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what we as at MyTail do. Um, but when it comes to games and, and uh, well, well, and, and when it comes like making this sort of like um, between the industry and educational institutions, bridging gap. So, um, most of you might, uh, at least in the Finnish games industry, know me from the IGDA work, since I am a chairperson of IGDA Finland. Uh, for those who don't know what IGDA is at all, and this is the first time you heard that word, um, IGDA stands for International Game Developers Association. And it has um, over 150 chapters and, and six worldwide. Uh, it's, it's a global... Um, phenomenon uh, uh, active already for 26 years. Um, 
So, and, and Finnish chapter is one of the, well, most successful and most active uh, in, in the world. Um, and I would say one of the biggest reasons for that is the community of developers and, and this whole, this sort of the, the, the trust we have here in Finland uh, when it comes to um, know-how and also sharing information and so forth. So, so communication between developers, since we have a successful industry, but yet it's very small considering how many people actually work in it. So it's everyone knows everyone and it's really, it, it has this very warm family feeling and, and there's a lot of trust. So this is something really unique here that uh, I believe is the biggest success of Finnish games industry, our community. Um, and this is why I'm very passionate to do a lot of this volunteer work uh, to, to um, uh, you know, give back to the community as well through my work. Um, so when it comes to the education part, um, so a few years ago, uh, together with City of Helsinki, uh, City of Vanta, and uh, Tikurila Library, there was a pilot program called IGDA Future, which has been um, focusing on the youth, as mentioned in the very beginning of this presentation. So let's say, well, children <laughs> or young adults. Uh, so, so it depends, like basically um, the, the age groups would be, you know, 10 to 15 and then 15 plus uh, kind of like uh, focus groups. Um, because among the uh, game studies institutions in Finland, which have in the, we, we have universities in all the major cities that have game education uh, um, across. And, um, but not many people are even, I mean, especially the sort of uh, youth is even aware of these opportunities to pursue studies or even career in games. And, and this is something that uh, I want to highlight the importance again of communication. Because the community that we be belong as, as developers uh, and IGDA activities and all other events that we, we have ac around conferences and so on, everything is organized for, uh, you know, audience which is 18 plus, adults, developers. Um, so there is nothing really for the youth unless it's uh, done by schools themselves or something. But again, as said, not necessarily the right skill set is there to really, really um, give them best uh, uh, input in it. Um, of course, there is assembly uh, festival in Finland, which is iconic uh, <laughs> event, which of course has a lot of youth uh, in there, especially with the land party. But um, uh, however, with the whole this sort of uh, uh, community and network, this is something that we uh, uh, work together and we want to change this, that children, young adults and so on are aware of these opportunities that are out there. So IGDA Future as a program is aiming for that. So we are we started here in Finland and now it's going forward um, uh, also internationally. Um, I have been uh, also appointed to join IGDA um, International Board. Um, so. Uh, I, my my work will be also very much involved with the academic community and working on the whole educational um, side with the uh, this sort of bridging this gap between the educational institutions and uh, um, industry. Um, so so when it comes to first, just to give you some examples from IGDA future activities that we have been uh, doing so far and that we have been planning and we are planning also to execute in the in the upcoming months. So uh, so first of all, it, in the pilot um, uh, event in, in Tikurila Library uh, in Vanta, uh, there were different events, series of events where developers would meet with the um, uh, children, families, youth, young adults, so forth, like, and, and uh, have workshop and seminar type of um, um, content that they could learn and see it literally at the spot, like try things out at, <laughs> at the spot um, and, and, uh, and get more um, information about what 
being a developer is, what being a game designer is, and so on. For example, what is a game narrative designer? Um, so showing them that besides what even career you taught in the very first, uh, because none of us from the older generation of game developers, none of us have official uh, education in um, games per se. Uh, so for example, I did my master's in classical arts. So I'm a painter, I'm a classical artist, um, and also did digital obviously hand in hand. So it was always in my, but I was gamer my whole life. My whole family is gamers. I grew up uh, with, with games and this, uh, so when, when even that I finished my, that was my escape from reality. Games were my, my you know, my, my biggest passion. So, I, but I, I never considered really like, am I even like, how can I really like, working games. It wasn't really back, especially when I was younger, it, it wasn't even crossing my mind. Uh, but then, uh, especially during my PhD studies and seeing the connection about, uh, especially games as a digital medium and uh, the art form, because they are recognized nowadays as a own art form. Um, th this is something where, and besides my work as a, as a freelancer, as an artist also on, on um, uh, various concept art pieces and so on, uh, I just, regardless of my, as I said, like my previous life thing of being a classical artist, I fully switched my career to games. Um, and a second reason why I did that, not just because like, oh, it's so awesome. It's because being an artist uh, is very solitary. I mean, being an an artist, <laughs> like being a painter and so on. So you are in your studio. Uh, yes, you meet your clients or you work on certain, but you basically work very much you work alone um and i realized that's not something that i am fine with in a sense that sort of i need people to um, um challenge me i need discussions on everyday basis that would you know like have this it might be just me being academic in the sense that i love debating i love you know, discussing all sorts of topics that are but this is something that i realized that I really want to work in a team and, and working with other people because I need that as creative. I need to be challenged. I need to um, get this sort of um, also outside of my comfort zone because what I like or how I like, it doesn't mean that's the right way. So games are really amazing way of also challenging yourself in that way as, as a creative individual. And this is something that we want to also show to youth that regardless what your, let's say your current um, even hobbies are, uh, let's say you like writing fan fiction or you like, um, drawing anime style characters, or you, you, you like coding stuff, or you like, like tech related things, or you like, uh, building stuff up. You like whatever you like as, as like what you enjoy. And regardless of like what you want to be expert in, it's extremely valuable in game development process. And, uh, so just for an example, like if you're creating a game that is uh, having any type of, let's say, um, need for, let's say, folklore information or need about art style information or need about, you know, any kind of this, you then you discuss with these different uh, experts from their fields to help you develop this experience that you want to have in a game. So again, communication essential in every single part of the development and and especially between this so so this is what we want to show to um young people that um how many opportunities there are in the games industry so even if you are you know you you want to let's say pursue to be biologist uh as, which is great but still there is and if you are passionate about games there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, as a biologist in game development, uh, or a geographer, uh, or, uh, you know, like, or, or art historian slash classical artist like me, like here. I am. So, so these are the things that, um, so all this, my passion about storytelling, semiotics and so on, uh, especially in the visual allegories now I implement in our games. Um, so opening eyes to, to uh, younger generations is crucial. How we can, as developers also make that impact on the next generation of developers or the future of games industry in, through education. 
And this is where IGDA Future steps in. So we want to create this sort of like by, by bridging this gap with, with communicating with, uh, with especially younger generations, how we can uh, make this difference uh, and make a real positive impact, not just in Finland, but, but globally to open all sorts of opportunities for, for uh, young people to, to, you know, have this uh, as, as, as a choice at any time, basically, to, to step in. Um, so, so this is something that, uh, as, as you might have noticed, uh, <laughs> I, I really am passionate about. Um, and that is why I'm really happy to work with so many amazing people worldwide who share this passion uh, for education and games, um, and and how we like uh, we, so regarding the plan. So I will give you a few few hints. Um, so first of all, now when this whole uh, COVID nineteen hit, um, one uh, parent uh, from uh, developer contacted us about incredible idea that actually what if because he was having struggles with homeschooling with own daughter. And uh, so, so he he was he started making games like very simple, very simple games just to explain how certain things, for example, for for the school because he couldn't otherwise like he's not a teacher so he couldn't otherwise explain. And then it came the idea that why don't we as developers help each other also by creating this sort of very simple games that we can share with other parents who might have the same struggle but are not developers. Or, or teachers to use as additional, you know, tools. Something that they can just, you know, share the link to explain more things about certain type of um, content that they are currently working on in in school, um, so so that they can understand better what what this is all about, whatever topic is. And we believe that this was a really fantastic initiative. So definitely IGDA Finland and through IGDA uh, Future Program, we decided to support this fully. So we created now this ongoing game jam or however you want to call it, because it's a it's an ongoing uh, development process where uh, various developers are working again, whenever they can, because this is like, however it's possible <laughs> to, to also work and, and all other uh, issues we have, I mean, in the current situation. Um, but point is that the uh, developers, parents and teachers work together in creating these games that are going to be completely free for everyone to use uh, in one um, single place, basically. Um, and uh, and so, so, yeah, this is one of the initiatives that, that we did just now at the moment of the uh, COVID outbreak. Um, We're also planning to do a lot of uh, mentoring and different kind of, um, let's say game jams, also uh, online ones uh, that um, uh, young generations also can meet people from the industry from various fields and, and, and hear these kind of uh, uh, stories and also all the ups and downs basically that, that we face uh, on, on a daily basis that not necessarily are put in the social media. So, so, but it's, it's very, very good to hear also, especially the, the mistakes and, and failures, um, because that's one of the biggest things in, in education. We must um, uh, focus on individuals, unique way of um, um, receiving things in a sense that we all as, as unique individuals, we all perceive and and uh, react differently. And especially in education, this is extremely important. We have different skill sets, we have different interests, we have different stuff that, that shape us as, as individuals. So having this in mind when you're creating game or tools or whatever for use, you have to think about the uniqueness of every single user that you have there. So, because in learning especially, everyone learns things differently. Some are better in learning things through reading, some are through listening, some are by doing things by their own hands. So in, in all of this, uh, this is where we step in and our creativity as, as developers, like giving this opportunity for um, individual to actually get the most out of the learning material on their own term. 
uh, and games can do that. Uh, one of the biggest impacts that games do is discovering stuff. So as you know, through a gameplay, nothing is given to you on a plate at the moment. Like, so you are going through, especially adventure, you are discovering different things. You are figuring things out as you go, especially with the tools and stuff. So, so it's not everything there given to you. Uh, and that feeling of discovery uh, stays with you as an individual for a very long time. Um, and this is, again, approach that we wish to have in, in games, in, in especially edu games, that learning through discovery will create extremely good and this sort of long-term impact when it comes to um, uh, individual uh, development. So, so again, the power of games when it comes to education is incredible. And I hope, I really hope that more developers will be approaching um, gamified uh, solutions as it's working in this. Because as I said, as, as a creative, I find it fascinating and I find it so, you know, inspiring that this sort of give me the challenge, give me the challenge where we can actually combine things between different technologies, different topics, different different um, aims. Because again, every learning or, or let's say therapy tool, you have a specific aim that that should do for, or, or this sort of what the user should receive um, from that content and, and in what level of, of let's say, know-how should we see. Um, and we already see also from the industry side, and I'm not talking about games, but just generally like the other issues that uh, game technology is being utilized heavily, especially in, for example, uh, different trainings uh, like um, VR safety training or uh, different kind of building simulations and so on. Um, some, some uh, again, misunderstand of gamifying, let's say, safety, that like if you do gamification, you automatically make something fun. Not really. The thing what we do, let's say, in my tale with the safety training or any kind of this sort of uh, simulating any kind of um, um, danger or, or anything that may happen, like if you don't, if you are not aware or you don't get certain know-how, there is nothing funny about it. For example, uh, you know, fire accident in the factory, um, collapse of a certain, you know, like, part of the building that is not done well or or some uh let's say um technical checkup wasn't done properly and therefore some, so there's a lot of things obviously depending of unique type of the of the product that we are speaking about but um this is something that there is nothing fun about it it's 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 all about like getting the most out of that experience to really enlighten the user out there um, so, so again, power of games when it comes to, uh, you know, everyday life, uh, uh, and, and I mean, to be honest, we are completely gamified already when it comes to all the apps and things that we do. Um, I mean, even our personal finances in banks are starting to be kind of like <laughs> gamified, not mentioning the all other apps with, with, um, well-being and health and whatnot. So, uh. So yeah, this is this is the future of learning when it comes to utilizing different technologies in. But now the question is, what technologies are good or or should be used in in what kind of uh, term? Because what I face very often is that when companies which have nothing to do with games or or not knowing anything about you know any <laughs> any any part of this sort of like uh, gamification aspects, but it's a sexy word. Everyone wants to have something gamified because everyone does it. Therefore, so all the cool kids do it. We want to do it too. Or someone got the funding to do, let's say, VR application for something. And it's like, so first thing when I when I <laughs> discuss this sort of um, thing is that uh, really I want to hear everything about this product and what actual aim is with it before I even see that is this. And if VR is not the, necessarily the good way to go, I'll be honest about it, at least as my opinion, that like this might not, due to the aims that you have, maybe VR might not be, but maybe this might be better option because this is the thing, like it's not necessarily, um, but of course some 
if if there is actual potential definitely then that's again the challenge the design challenge that i have been speaking about that of course you you are inspired to work on but for some it makes no sense because vr is is still b2b uh, mainly um you know like the use is still mainly among the uh, b2b users so uh the individual is not necessarily not it's not still that commercial out there so, so this is one of the big issues as well, even now when we see that um, also meetings and everything else, string, like, yeah, even if you have a headset and set stuff in your office, but you don't necessarily have it in, at home. Uh, I mean, not everyone does. So, so again, there is this sort of still lack of, of um, having this sort of like more global use when it comes to uh, hardware itself. Uh, but with... Um, devices such as Oculus Quest uh, or, or Go or any of those that basically are not requiring, um, you know, like extremely powerful computer or anything, but they're just standalone devices that you plug and go, kind of you do your thing, are uh, making the change and definitely the price as well. So because now the price of Oculus Quest is pretty much the same like console, any other gaming console. So it's also affordable. It's not anymore you know, something that not necessarily everyone wishes to invest in. Um, so these things are slowly changing. There will be a bigger impact on the individual users when it comes to VR, for example. But before VR, I mean, there are so many other things that we can use. And, and also this is where having uh, younger generations involved in this sort of brainstorming and figuring out things and, and again, communicating because they use uh, like all of these devices, especially when it comes to smartphones. And so like in so many ways that we in our generation are not even, even as developers, like, okay, so this is what <laughs> kids do nowadays. Um, so, so figuring out what really and how they, um, perceive these things is crucial for us to understand as well, especially what and how they need and what they want. So including youth as well in, in this kind of um, uh, decision-making or, or this sort of testing, um, uh, brainstorming and different kind of, um, you know, like regarding design uh, is something that uh, is very, very important, at least we see it from the IGDA Future uh, program. Uh, and, and this is something that we wish to uh, fully uh, integrate with collaboration with everyone <laughs> and anyone who is interested in this field. Um, so currently in Finland, we are already having partnership with the major um, universities, also high schools uh, across Finland who really found this um, uh, program fascinating and want to be part because there are a lot of teachers, as said, teachers need this and they are struggling because they are not developers. They can't develop this. They need our expertise and, and they are again, very welcoming and really great to work with. Um, so big kudos to Finnish teachers um, and especially universities that have uh, so many inspiring students, uh, like just mentioning Turku, for example, here in Turku, we have three universities uh, and their game studies um, through the Turku game lab. So there is the University of Turku, uh, I'm a um, vocational school. Uh, and, and so on. So there's a lot of aspects. We have also animation department and so on. So there is a lot of talent that we have that can, and, and we are already already for years, um, utilizing all this talent for different uh, projects and, and things we can do together. Um, so, so this is something that I wish to encourage also out there uh, that uh, please, as developers uh, consider to, again, um, work on some projects or, or partner up with some of the um, uh, local, uh, let's say educational uh, institutions to actually figure out these things, see what they need, see what, uh, how it's, because again, different countries, different laws, different educational systems. Um, of course, it's all quite unique everywhere. So this is something that we have to have in mind as well. 
even when we are creating, let's say, product here in Finland and we want to put it out there uh, in the, uh, let's say, on a global market or we want to mainly maybe uh, put it in some specific, let's say, school to use in whichever part of the world, we have to have in mind cultural adaptation and appropriation to which, again, having the right partners in that field to help you uh, adopt your game, uh, especially culturally and, and the sort of like that it doesn't make by mistake any any kind of controversy is, is really important. Um, so, so these are kind of the main takeaways that I would like to give the sort of like communicate and collaborate. Um, one way to do that is again, through community of, of developers that, for example, IGDA has on a global level. And, and this is something that uh, through all these SIGs and chapters, um, we, SIG, sorry, SIG stands for the special interest groups. So there is a lot of special interest groups uh, with the different um, sort of focuses from developers who are really passionate about. So there's a lot of different uh, uh, special interest groups out there. And I would warmly recommend to be in touch with them because uh, the members of these groups are not located, they're spread all over the world. Um, so there are the, um, also educators, uh, serious games, gamification. Uh, there is uh, also different other like indie developers, um, VR, AR, so you name it, there is a SIG about. So, so this is something that, uh, especially through IGDA, uh, you can get a lot of value through, through the network to actually find the right people to, to discover all these uh, different opportunities uh, when, when it comes to collaboration and, and, and making your product uh, uh, improved in so many ways. Um, and yeah, if, if, uh, if nothing else, what we as uh, kind of what what we as at least I find it um, as a also as a mother, uh, <laughs> but but as educator and as a developer, um, I find it as part of my responsibility or or our responsibility that we should try to do our best, and the only way to do it is to, I mean to to actually try. Because if we don't try doing stuff out there, if we just think, oh, this might not work, and but without doing and without trying, well, no progress ever happens. <laughs> so uh, keep questioning things around, keep keep trying improving, um, keep failing, because failing is extremely important part of every day in everyone's life. So basically, make sure that uh, no matter how it may feel, the failure get up and try again, but learn something from that failure. That's the main thing. Um, so, so failures are shaping us up. And this is something that, again, uh, games are very well um, um, managing the failure, which we can learn a lot from. How do you manage to deal with the failure, let's say, through a game, any game? Um, and like in, in free-to-play mobile, I mean, you basically don't have failing sense of that you feel, you, you, but even that you fail, you are encouraged basically like just try better or, or, you know, watch an ad, do this and that. Like just basically it's not even considered that you failed. Uh, unlike, let's say in the real life, if you do something and you are not happy with it, uh, you consider it as failure. Uh, but instead, if we change the view to it, that it's a learning curve, and it's fine now it's slightly down <laughs> but basically um make sure that you stand up and do try again do do uh, be consistent with that um and that's the same thing with the development any development there are ups and downs in everything so so um it's it's all connected and that's where you know like through education we are th that's the only way how we can really make um the, the actual difference, especially for the future. Um, and again, these these young, talented individuals. I mean, I'm I'm always impressed to see, for example, through even these short internships that we we have at um, at our company, but also around the sort of that you have, let's say, 
14, 15 year old who just on their own, I mean, let's say uh, 3D modeling or, or programming in Unity and, and the projects that they do on their own, is, it's absolutely stunning. So, so just there is interest, there is talent. And this is where, again, it's part of our responsibility to um, help them shape, you know, like our future colleagues uh, into this sort of like really, um, really beautiful developers and, and people. Um, so yeah, that's that's where uh, where my stand is, and I I hope that um, uh, at least from the education and and the industry uh, kind of aspect, uh, this talk helped a bit at least to understand what kind of amazing opportunities they are. And if you are interested to discuss this for, forward with me or, or our team at IGDA Future or IGDA in general, um, uh, please don't hesitate to be in touch. Uh, my contact is uh, very much available anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, um, and definitely you can find me on the deal room. Uh, so yeah, um, that would be it from my side from today. So I would like to hear any questions or comments you may have uh, since we do have some time for it. Okay, we have some questions here. Uh, Exactly. This is where the sorry. So Jason, uh, your your comment is that's the thing. Like it, it wrong people are are involved with these things. So this is where we as as developers, designers, it's um, important thing on this is actually being able and very strictly saying no to client or teacher or whatever with whomever you because uh, that's where the communication comes again as as an essential thing you have to say no to the nonsense and bad ideas, especially from the design perspective. Um, and, and this is where our expertise from the game development come in to show them how to actually build stuff around, let's say, the, the educational content that, for example, is, is now as, as a main aim. So as we listen to them exactly what is needed to be done, they also need to listen to us to show how to do it properly as a real, you know, like um, immersive experience that we want to give. And definitely there is this sort of, uh, a lot of a lot of bad examples in the sense that how, how things shouldn't be done, which is good for us also for us as developers to learn like, yeah, this is not a good way to go. So, yeah. Um, Yes, uh, not just in Canada, uh, everywhere, <laughs> unfortunately. So definitely we, we must, uh, as, as again, developers, be there for the rest of our, our people out there. So we need to be there to develop as much of the uh, con good quality content and collaborate with other experts to uh, get the best out for the homeschooling, online schooling, distance learning, whatever it is, therapy, all sorts of this sort of uh, also distance uh, support and assistance is extremely important. Do we have any other?